lot of times that's why when we have a guest speaker, sometimes I'll do that. I'll slip out and sit with my wife, but we just don't get to do that. I mean, at Sunday school, I'm teaching. She's sitting in the. She, we're in the same room, but you know, she's sitting there. And she, uh, so. Yeah. That's All right, we're going to wait just a minute. We're going to try to give uh, Brother Phil uh, and Brother Tony a, a moment to get back in. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a quick joke. Let me tell you a joke. Let me tell you a quick joke. Let me tell you a quick joke. Well, I'm going to wait for them. They're coming back. We're going to. All right. She said, "Really? All right. All right. Let me tell you a joke. This." There's there's uh, three, three Cajuns sitting in a hospital down in Baton Rouge waiting for their wives who's about to deliver. We're not talking groceries, all right? So they're waiting on the wives. Nurse comes out and she says, "Hey, Mr. Bourgeois." He said, "Hey, Mr. Bourgeois, Mr. Bourgeois." She said, "What I got, boy or girl?" She said, "Mr. Bourgeois." He said, "You got one of both." He said, "What you said?" That's right. You got a fine, healthy boy and a fine, healthy girl. He said, "Well." He said, that's only right. That's only right and proper. He said, I'm the head scout, chief scout south to Louisiana for the Twins baseball team. He said, oh, they have twins. He gets ready to leave. Or he turns around and hands him the, the cigar and thing, you know. So about 15 minutes later, the same nurse comes out and says, hey, Mr. Tibido. He said, oh, Mr. Tibido, that's me. What I got, boy or girl? He said, she said, you got more than one, too. He said, twins? She said, no, triplets, trio. He said, whoa, what you said? That's right. Two fine, healthy boys, a fine, healthy girl. He said, well, that's only right and proper. I ought to have tw- the triplets. He said, I, I'm the head salesman for the 3M company. South Louisiana, I ought to have three of them. He turned around to give that other Cajun three cigars, and he was hitting the door. He said, man, where are you going? He said, I'm leaving here. I work for the 7-Up company. <laughs> now, <laughs> that's cute. Y'all to laugh at that. That's funny. All right. Then if they'll hurry, I won't have to do this much longer. Uh, but... It, but, but my, my wife knows I could I could probably do this half the night. Uh, let me give you, we'll give you Miss, one of Miss Katie's favorites while while we're waiting on them to come back. Uh, Boudreau and Thibodeau down in South Louisiana decided they wanted to get into the cow business. So to get into the cow business, they had to have them a bull. So they decided they was going to go up to Texarkana to the livestock shucks auction up there and get them a bull. So they, they scraped up all the money they could, come up with a thousand dollars. So the Boudreaux got the $1,000, and he took off, got the trailer, the truck, and he went from Bro Bridge, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, all the way up to, to Texarkana, Arkansas. He got there and pulled in. He's just about to finish up the sale. He come in. He said, uh, I, my name, my name, which one did I say? My, my name's T.B. Doe, and I am from Bro Bridge, and I want the best bull you got. Well, one of them guys said, well, sir, he said, I got a bull right here. It's a prize-winning bull. He said, but I won't take anything less than $999 for him. Tibido said, I got $1,000 right here. Load him up. So sure enough, they load the bull up. And he takes all starts back down to Bull Bridge. Well, he gets back to Shreveport and runs out of gas. And he just you know, don't know what he's going to do. All he got is a dollar left. You know, he put gas in the truck. Got, he's got a dollar. So he goes and he's trying to figure out what to do. So he decides he's going to go in and go to... Uh, who did he go to first? I forgot. To uh, uh, yeah, to, to the payphone. That's right. He gets on the payphone and he, he says, he puts it. Said I need to make a uh, a call to Bro Bridge. And she said that's going to be a dollar a minute. He said a dollar a minute. He said I don't got but a dollar. He said what? Well, she said I'm sorry, sir. It's a dollar a minute. He said oh, and I can't. So he hangs up and he looks across the street. Well, there's a Western Union over there. So he thinks I'll send him a telegram. So he walks across the street, walks in. He said I need to. He said you send him to tell him a gram. He said, yes, sir, we do. He said, I need to send me a telegram to, to Mr. Boudreau in Bro Bridge, Louisiana. He said, all right. He said, it's going to be a dollar a word. Oh, he said, a dollar a word. He said, I only got but a dollar. He said, I'm sorry, sir, it's a dollar a word. He said, hmm. he said I tell you, you got one of them dictionaries back there? He said, yes, sir, I have a dictionary back here. He said, let me, let me see that dictionary. So he gets that dictionary. He thumbs through there for a second. He says, here, here, here's my dollar. He said, you send, you send Boudreau that word right there. Okay, all right. I did. So he sends the word. He gets it all done. Gets his dollar. And he said, "Now, Mr. Tippido, he said, I could ask you a question." He said, "Why in the world? You only had a dollar. He said, Why in the world do you want to send the word comfortable uh, to Boudreaux down in South Louisiana?" He said, "Oh, he said that's easy." He said, "Mr. Boudreaux, he said he reads real slow. When he reads that, he's going to read come for the bull." <laughs> now that's fun. Y'all laugh. That's funny right there. Well, yes, yes. All right. 
Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bore my wife anymore. We could, we could, we could go. Wait, one more? Do one more? Okay, Miss Katie said do. Oh, here they come. Miss Katie said, Miss Katie said do one more. Uh, Boudreaux, Boudreaux went to, decided, went to, to, to college, went to LSU Ag School down there in, in South, South Louisiana. And graduated, decided he wanted to start himself a chicken farm. A chicken farm. So he got about 40 acres of land, wrote, tilled it all up, rolled it all up, went out and got a bunch of little chicks. And he went out there and poked toes in the ground, buried them little chicks up to their neck, watered them all real good. Come out the next day, they's all dead. He said, whoo, what in the world? Must have did something wrong. So he, so, <laughs> so he tills all them under, rolls it all back up, goes out and buys a bunch of another batch of chicks. And he comes in there and he pokes a little hole in the ground. This time he sticks them down there in their head first with the little feet he's sticking up. You know, he waters them all real good. He comes out the next day, they're all dead. Oh, man, what in the world is going on here? So he calls up Mr. Thibodeau from, from the ag school that was his teacher. And he said, Mr. Thibodeau, he said, I got a problem. He said, I don't know what to do. He said, son, what are you doing? He said, I, I started his chicken farm. And he went through the whole thing with him, got up and put and rolled it up, put him out there with a little head sticking up, watered them all good. Went out the next day, they's all dead. He said, I did till that up, rolled it back up again, got the little fixie sticking up, and got all, and they all dead. Mr. Thibodeau said, Boudreaux, he said, you've got to be the dumbest guy I have ever heard of in my life. He said, Don't you know I can't tell you nothing without a soil sample first? <laughs> All right. Okay. That's, we could go on, but we'll stop since you're enjoying that so much. Take your Bible, look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. <laughs> oh, amen. We can pick on him. Pick on them Cajuns from, from Louisiana. They're some, they some fun folks to deal with. Oh, goodness. If you've ever tried to deal with one, you, you want to talk hard-headed. All right. Huh? And hard to understand. I could, I could tell you some real stories about Dr. Thibodeau. I could tell you some real stories about Boudreaux. Boudreaux and Thibodeau had a, a friend of mine that, his, his grandma and grandpa, I mean, they were French-speaking Cajun people from South Louisiana what showing up. And uh, one day he got out and got the tractor stuck out in, the, out in the pasture. So he comes in the house and he gets his wife. He said, now, honey, I need you to help me out. I need, we need to pull this tractor out. Of the, I got stuck and I need you to, I'm going to hook the truck to it and, and, and I'm going to get on the tractor. When I give you the signal, you're gonna, I want you to pull, you know, and we'll pull me out of this mud so we can get this, get this field work done. True story. So he gets out there, gets her in the truck, and when I give you the signal, he gets in the, gets on the tractor, tells her to go. Well, what he forgot to tell her was to take the slack out of the chain before she before she got on it. She got in the truck, she put it to the floor. When he hit the end of that chain, literally it jerked the front axle out from underneath that tractor. It's, Rick, Rick said his granddaddy got out. It's my fault. It's my fault. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have told you. I should have knew. It's my fault. <laughs> anyway, that wasn't the first incident that they'd had. But anyway, all right. Philippians chapter 4. I saw them running around back there. I'm not sure where they're at. I think they're having coffee or something. But we're, we're going to go ahead and start. I tried to wait as long as I could. All right. Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at a, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Just give us our, our basis and our thought tonight. And then... I'll introduce to you what I'd like for us to do tonight. And, um, and the rest of the service really will be up to you. We'll give you opportunity uh, and as much uh, participation as we have. Um, that's, that's how long the service will take. Philippians chapter 4. Let's just go ahead and start in verse number 4. Um, that, that's, that's a good place to start. But it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And look at verse number 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And then here's the result of that. The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes we, we talk about those things that we desire but sometimes we have a difficulty connecting what God said. If this is what you want, if this is what you desire, then this is what you need to do. 
they're, they're Dr. Tom Wallace, uh, Tom Wallace or, or Crosswhite, Crosswhite, I think, used to talk about this all the time. He talked about trigger verses. And trigger verses in the Bible are just exactly what I just said. Uh, they say, God says, do this and this will happen. This action will trigger this response. Right? And, and that's what we see here in this. He said again in verse number 6, go back and look at it. Be careful for nothing, don't worry, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. And then he says here, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Here's the, here's the trigger verse, right? Here's the do, the action. He said, if we don't worry and, and we take everything to God in prayer, praying for ourselves and others, that's what prayer and supplication means. But we add in that last part, with thanksgiving, we'll do those things, then the peace of God will be applied to our hearts and minds and will guard us. And I don't know if there's anybody in the room tonight that would say, no, I really don't want the peace of God in my life. Well, how are we going to get it? Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. We have to learn. We have to mix in that idea of giving thanks to God for what He's done. Now, I'm going to do something. We're going to pull a lesson from Reformers Unanimous. Uh, and I'm, we're going to do this. If you have a pen and piece of paper handy, you might want to write something down. That's up to you. Maybe you can remember it. Maybe your memory is better than mine. And maybe you thought we did mention this earlier, uh, so maybe you've kind of thought about it before tonight, uh, and you've already got something prepared. But they teach in RU, when you're praying, you, a, a lot of times in several different areas of your prayer, uh, it, it, they, they teach this principle that we ask God and then we stop and we listen. It, it talks about supplication in the prayer journal for RU. And literally it says, ask God whom He would like for you to pray for today. And then pause and listen. And as God impresses on your heart that name of that individual for that moment and that day, write that down and pray for them. One of the sections in there talks about this. It says, thank the Lord for what He's doing in your life. And the principle is, pause just for a moment and listen. And as God speaks or moves on your heart and gives you something to be thankful for, write it down and thank Him for that. That, that teaches us so many different things uh, uh, about Walking with God. So tonight what I'd like to do is I'm going to lead us in prayer. And I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Not out loud. I'll pray out loud. I'll lead us. But to ask God to give you a couple of things to be thankful for tonight. And as God speaks to them, we're going to take... 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, however long we feel like we need to go. Of silence and listening to God. As God speaks to your heart. As God moves you in a certain direction. Write it down. Remember it. Think about it. And then what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to give, I'm not going to call you, I'm not going to go down the row and make everybody do it. We're just going to give you opportunity. To spend some time tonight just thanking the Lord for what He's done in our life. Everybody understand what we just said? Father, we're again so thankful for all that You've done. Seriously, we could be here we could be here for a long time if we really sought to thank You for everything that You've done in our life. Father, we could be here half the night if we really, we really were thankful for what You've done in our lives this week. We listened to You and we recognized Your hand and all that You've done. Father, I, I, I pray tonight that You will speak to our hearts. That You will give us just a few items of peace. 
we can honestly, openly be thankful for, knowing that it was your hand that brought it, your hand that worked it, and by your grace we received it. So, Father, I pray that as we spend just a few minutes, or a few moments in, in, in silent contemplation, it will help us to hear from heaven respond. Amen. All right. We're going to give you the opportunity. Now, again, I, you don't have to say anything tonight. I'm not going to put you on the spot. But I'm going to ask, would there be anyone that would like to start? Just 30 seconds, 45 seconds. I'm not asking for, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Just very quickly. Something that, that you can thank the Lord for, whether it's this week, this month, this year, this lifetime. You just want to, it, it got impress upon your heart. Something to be thankful for. Anyone else? Yes. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Is that a hand in the back? Can you stretch it? What else? Yes. Man. Man. I'll take just a moment. We could... And I like, oh, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound cliche or just, but what we can do. And there's so many, so many things that, that we could think about. But one of, one of the things this year that stands, or a couple of things that stands out to me, number one is just the hand of God working in our lives. I mean, last time I talked about this, my wife got on to me, so 
I'll pray, pray for her. Pray for me. I take a pill every morning. And they tell me if I don't take that pill, I probably won't be here. Now, I understand the hand of God, and I, I'm not trying to discount that. And I've had blood clots in my lungs twice. They don't know why. But both times, the Lord saw fit to, to leave me. I don't understand that. I, I don't. I, the first time, the first time that I had that, my doctor came in. Bless her heart, she had a bedside manner. But she came in into ICU, and she said, "Preacher, the next morning, she said, preacher, there's no reason that you should be lying in this bed." She went on to say, "You're the kind of guy that, pe- that they find dead at his desk, and nobody knows why." And then once you die with a blood clot, everything else clots, and they don't know what happened. I'm thankful that God, in His mercy, in His grace, had a plan, and He's made a way. And every morning when I take that little pill, it helps me remember. How fragile life really is. It helps me to thank God every day for another day that I can get up and I can do what I love to do. Sometimes we we look at our vocation as something we have to do. Instead of recognizing we're doing what God's called us to do, whether it's preaching or working in a jail or physical therapist or, or whatever it is. If that's God's calling in our life and God has truly placed us in that position, and we all ought to get up the same way every morning and thank God that we have one more day that we can spend for Him. So I try to be thankful every morning Look at that little red pill. And I know it's not the pill that's keeping me here. I understand. I'm I'm a little bit bigger than that. But God's allowed, is is using that in in, in my life. And the second thing that I thought about was I'm thankful for my my wife and daughter. And, and I understand the church's position and the, and the thankfulness for God working on this end. I thank God for Him working on the other end. Thank God for a wife and daughter when I came to them in South Mississippi and said, thinking about going to Kentucky. But they didn't say, well, you can go by yourself. Because that would have been a little tough. <laughs> it had been kind of hard to pastor a church with, with them still down there. And I, I'm not going to go through all the, you know, you, you, you don't need to hear and don't want to hear. Well, they gave up this and they, that's, that's not the point. But I'm thankful that I have a wife and, and family. That while it took them a little bit of time to adjust and kind of get, kind of get easy with the idea, some more than others. I'll never forget the night. We sat down together and both of them said, this is what God wants us. That may sound like a little thing to you. This husband and this daddy, it's a big thing. I appreciate their support and their love. Because you get to deal with me three days a week. They deal with me every day. Y'all pray for y'all pray for them. <laughs> I appreciate the church. And I, and I know we've said this a lot in the last four months. But I'm just going to keep saying it. We're going to we're going to stay at it and stay with it because it's it's the truth. And if we'll keep that focus, 
we, we can see, and, I, and several have said it tonight, we can see God continue to do great things. As we look back at our history as a church, and we look at the ups and downs, while I believe some of the downs God had no hand in orchestrating those, God did not forsake the church through those. And God was positioning this church for something great. Now, we don't know exactly when all of that's going to come to fruition. But I sure am praying that God let me see it. And I hope He's got me here for such a time as this. But I do know this. If we'll, if we'll follow Him and seek His will and do what He says, He'll move and He'll work. And we'll see God do good. Now, I know I know now if we went around the room and we and we talked about what is your biggest need. What was your biggest need as a family in 2018? What do you see as your biggest need as a family in 2019? Now I'm not talking about the church. I'm not talking about us collectively. I'm talking about individually as a family unit. Each family that's here. We could probably go around and each one of us could probably come up with at least one major thing. But we could say, well, that's what God's doing in our lives right now. May we approach it from this standpoint. That we are thankful that God is moving and God is working in our lives. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's fun. But whatever it is, let's trust the Lord. Let's give Him thanks. And let's watch Him work. I'm not going to close. I'm not going to close without giving anybody else an opportunity. Anyone else? I say just. Yes. Sir. Anyone else? We'll close the service when we're done. All right. How do you think? Oh, we could.
quit too soon. But we're about to. I hope as we've taken time tonight that we've obeyed, number one, that we've obeyed the Lord. Number two, that we've listened to each other. Did, did you catch what's important to those that stood and taught family, God's hand, opportunity? God is still doing a good work. God's providing everything that we need to see it. All right, that's awesome. I'm done. I told you I wasn't going to. It's up to you. I appreciate your participation tonight. I'm thankful that, that, that we've had an opportunity to think about that. Take some time this week. Every once a day is when you get an opportunity to get by yourself, get alone. Just ask God, what, what can I thank you for today? And as He brings those things to your mind, think on those. Meditate on that. See the hand of God. The more we recognize what God is doing, the more we thank Him, the more He can do in our lives. Probably the first or second Sunday in January, we'll talk about what I what I refer to as the state of the church address. And we'll talk about the year and kind of where we look to go and what we think we're going to be doing and asking God to do some things in the church in the year. So we'll be saving that for then. If you pray about that between now and then. I know we've already got some Christmas get-togethers that are beginning to be... Uh, plan Sunday school classes, different things. So we'll be talking about that in the, the weeks to come. Uh, we've got an annual business meeting coming up in December. Pray about that. Uh, just a lot of things that are happening. You pray that God will just continue to knit our hearts together and grow us as He sees fit. As He opens the doors, we need to be prepared. When He opens the floodgates, we need to be prepared to receive what he's, uh, Miss, Miss Jenny always talks about come, come, toting her umbrella around. Preparing, preparing for rain. If we, listen, if we pray and ask God to send the rain, we need to be prepared to receive it when we die. Anyone else? Any, any, any prayer requests? Anything? Announcement, announcement? Anything else before we dismiss? Please, please be safe this week. If you're traveling, take it easy. You've got folks coming in. We'll keep praying for them that they be safe. Uh, enjoy Family Time Thursday. Have a great week. Let's pray. Father.